I have good news for you today. God wants us to be whole. We have in the story of the children of Israel when they left Egypt. In Psalms, it tells us that there wasn't one feeble one among them when they left. God was preparing them to move in their promised land to be whole. And that's what God has for us. In fact, the meaning of shalom, which we know in the Bible means peace, actually means nothing missing, nothing broken. When we read the scriptures about an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth, those really are not revenge scriptures. Those are scriptures of fulfilling or filling a whole. God wants us whole, W-H-O-L-E, that there's nothing missing, nothing broken in our life. So if I've caused you pain, that scripture is an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth, I need, if I killed your cow, then I need to replace your cow. I need to fill that hole that I've caused. So it's not that. So God wants us to be whole. When Jesus healed people, many times he didn't just heal them, but he would say, go and be whole. Because he wanted not just, the, for example, the woman with the issue of blood. When she came out against everything she knew, she could have been stoned for coming out, but she was going to get healed that day. And she came out and touched Jesus, the hem of his garment. And he felt the virtue leave from him, the scripture says, and he healed her. And he said for her to go and be whole. I believe that that means that he replaced and prospered, she prospered to replace all the money because the word says she had used all her livelihood to pay the doctors. And I believe God not only healed the, the issue of blood, but he also prospered her to fill that lack that she had in her life. In Matthew 13, we have the scripture of the parable of the tares and the wheat. And in Matthew 13, verse 24, it says, The kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. But when the grain had sprouted and produced a crop, then the tares also appeared. So the servants of the owner came and said to him, Sir, did you not sow good seed in your field? How then does it have tares? He said to them, an enemy has done this. No matter what we've done, what kind of life that we've lived, and even whether we're a Christian or not, an enemy wants to sow into our life. And I have become aware <clears throat> of something that works in our lives. He wants to bring a spirit of trauma. And the thing about a spirit of trauma, he doesn't come alone. He wants to bring his friends they are shame, wall builder, isolationist, grief, depression, anger, hopelessness, victimization, control, even hoarding. A spirit of trauma wants to put a hole, H-O-L-E, in you. And then we try to fill it with other stuff. A lot of times these things happen when, when we're children, that we don't have um, um, walls in place or we don't have... Um, the net for which we filters in place that we can see things and the enemy perpetrates these things in us or even when even when we're adults that we are um, weak maybe at a, a low point in our lives and he's going to come in and so sometimes we just ignore that you know we get saved we pray about okay God's going to take it but we're in pain and the reason I know about this because I was like that um, my brother and I have talked over and over again about how we were raised in the Beaver Cleaver household. Uh, our mom and dad stayed together. They loved one another. They loved me and Daryl. Of course, he understood that I was always the better child. But as long as we got that across, we knew it. But we, we had a great life. But I realized, and sadly, several years ago, I mean, I, I always felt it, but I never could put a handle on it. I was in great emotional pain. I began to realize uh, probably what were some things that had happened earlier in our life when we were um, invited to leave the denomination that we were in. Anyway, it caused there to be a spirit of rejection that took up residence in my life. And so um, there might be rejection or you might have had abuse or you might have had some kind of loss. Anything that's taken away from you that causes a wound, an enemy has done this in your life. It is not of God. 
But God doesn't want you just living with it. He doesn't want, well, I guess this is my cross to bear. No, it is not your cross to bear. Jesus bore these things for you so that you don't have to bear them. We don't have to wait until we die to be made whole. That is for us now. Thank you, Jesus. I can remember when each of my three daughters was born. It's a memory. And, and of course, childbirth is not a picnic. But if now, 30 years later, for my oldest one, 30 years later, if I had more than a memory, but I had actual pain about it, then something is drastically wrong. And it's the same thing in our lives. Um, isn't it interesting, though, that like, it, to use abuse as an example, that if someone abuses a child, that the child feels shame for it and carries that when the child was a child. And so the enemy wants to perpetrate things upon you and in you that you don't recognize. And if we don't recognize it and the enemy doesn't want you to recognize it, he always wants to be under your radar because he knows if you recognize him and his work, then you will have authority over him. And when you use your authority, he has to leave. God wants us to be whole. He came to save us, not just our spirits, but our whole man. Actually, the, the mission statement that, that we had for our church, Covenant Life Church, was, my daddy came up with this, the whole gospel, reaching the whole world with the whole gospel for the whole man. It's for every part of us. Jesus came to make us whole. He doesn't want us walking around with like holes in us and all that kind of stuff. So this is a short video about this. Please do not take the length of the um, video as the lightness of this subject. It's not. But what I want you to know, we're not talking years of therapy and counseling. I'm talking about Jesus. I read recently a book and the guy was talking about that Jesus was a time traveler. And he was talking about how God is outside of time and he can go anywhere back in our past and put his hand on something and touch it. Jesus can go to those memories because we all, when it happens, you can remember when the feeling came, when, oh, it's like, oh, I feel the sword going in. And you know at that time, he can touch that place. The memory may never be gone, but the pain can be released in you. So we're not talking, God can do things now, not take eons of time for things to change over. And I believe this is one of the things in this new era that we're gonna be seeing things happening, manifestation now, 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 and seeing people change. I believe that for you today. I believe that God can make you whole even now. Let's pray. Father, I thank you that you love us so much. And Jesus, we thank you that you paid the price and the price was enough. We don't owe the devil nothing. And so, Father, we just thank you that you're going to pour in your oil and wine and minister to these that are suffering from this, that they can walk free and whole in Jesus' name. One last thing. The scriptures talk about whatever is loosed in earth is loosed in heaven. Whatever is bound on earth is bound in heaven. So in the name of Jesus, I loose you from the claws and the wounds and the poison of the enemy. And I bind you to the love and purposes of God that he has for you, that you walk free in that. God bless you today. Thank you.